When I came to Chicago, John Dewey was still alive, but his influence had long since peaked. In those days, the best students in the university were sitting at the feet of Leo Strauss, who taught them that Plato had been magnificently right and Dewey dangerously wrong. Utility and truth, Strauss wrote, are two entirely different things. Strauss wasn't the first German to be dismissive about pragmatism. <laughs> Georg Simmel described it as what the Americans were able to get out of Nietzsche. <laughs> Simmel was wrong if he thought that James and Dewey got ideas from Nietzsche, but he was right to see their views as overlapping with his. To my mind, the most important area of overlap is their opposition to positivism, to the idea that physical science can answer metaphysical questions by discovering the intrinsic nature of reality. All three philosophers, James, Dewey, and Nietzsche, wanted us to stop asking such questions, but James and Dewey did better than Nietzsche at formulating a coherent anti-metaphysical anti view. That's because they were never tempted to adopt Nietzsche's dry, aloof, condescending attitude toward human beings' struggle for happiness. Instead, the pragmatists urged that we judge all philosophical views, including their own, by whether they aided in that struggle. They thereby achieved a consistency that Nietzsche never managed. Nietzsche is notorious for his vacillations. He wavers between criticizing the very idea of objective truth and proclaiming that his own views are objectively true and everybody else is objectively false. <laughs> On one page he tells us, I quote, we simply lack any organ for knowledge, for truth, we know or believe or imagine just as much as may be useful in the interests of the human herd. But a few pages earlier in the gay science he wrote, Quote, even we, godless anti-metaphysicians, still take our fire, too, from the flame lit by a faith that is thousands of years old, the faith of Plato, the truth is divine. At his best, however, Nietzsche explicitly rejected the sort of science worship that links much of 21st century analytic philosophy to 19th century positivism. When, when Nietzsche says there are no facts, only interpretations, and seems willing to admit that that goes for his own assertions as well, he's edging closer to the more coherent position that James and Dewey adopted. Both pragmatists would have agreed with him that, quote, a scientific interpretation of the world might therefore still be one of the most stupid of all possible interpretations, one of the poorest in meaning. Unfortunately, however, passages like that one are offset by bursts of positivistic ragadoctrio, as when Nietzsche writes, I quote, still the gay science, long live physics, and even more so that which compels us to turn to physics, our honesty. The best thing about pragmatism is that it does consistently what Nietzsche did only occasionally and half-heartedly. It abandons positivism's attempt to elevate science above the rest of culture. It rejects the quarrel between platonic immaterialism and Democritian materialism and all other metaphysical disputes because they are irrelevant to practice. Pragmatists substitute the question, which descriptions of the human situation are most useful for which human purposes for the question, which description tells us what that situation really is. Pragmatism thus puts natural science on all fours with politics and art. It treats science as one more source of suggestions about what we human beings might do with ourselves.